All right guys, we're gonna have another truck video today and what we're doing today is some maintenance. You guys can see we've got some oil, some Zero W20 from Mobile One and an oil filter. So we're gonna be doing the first oil change on the truck. Well, I had the factory oil change because Chevrolet gave me one oil change since uh, we've owned the truck and the rest will be up to us. Uh, we haven't hit any you know, notifications that say you need to have an oil change, but we're at like 15 to 18% on the uh, oil and I was like, well, you know what? I, I want to get the truck changed now because we're about to take it on some road trips and stuff. So that's kind of what we're doing. We'll be figuring out how to change the oil on a new Silverado. I haven't had to do a new vehicle in like, I don't know, 10 years. I think the last new vehicle we got was the SS. So uh, this is going to be kind of a learning experience for me, and we're just going to document it. And also, I have another problem. You guys will remember the uh, wireless charger I put in the truck. You know, we got that kit from Boost Auto. Well, I am now having a service remote key error every time I get in the truck. So you hit unlock, it's not unlocking. You hit lock with the chrome button on the door handle, it's not working. So... We'll uh, also try to explore that. I think we just have to disconnect the battery and let that um, you know, be disconnected for 30 minutes because as I've said in the past, even doing a brake pad change, you had to disconnect the battery. So this tr these trucks are super finicky if you change anything. And we unplugged a couple modules when we did that swap with the Boost Auto Kit. So, you know, I'm thinking that, you know, just disconnecting a couple plugs for the 30 minutes that it might have been disconnected, you know, that might have said, uh, triggered an error somewhere, so. All right, guys, here is that service keyless start system. I just wanted to show you that error before we disconnect the battery. All right, so if you can see over here, we're gonna be disconnecting the battery. It's a 10 millimeter. And uh, simply just pop the connector off, loosen up this bolt, and we should be good to go. So. Now, if you're just doing a normal oil change, guys, you shouldn't have to do this, but kind of like I said, since we were messing with that Boost Auto charging port, you know, I'm kind of not surprised that we have to do this, so. All right, there you go. We have disconnected battery. We'll let that discharge. And hopefully that resolves our keyless entry system error. Now, I did see a video, a guy with a 1500 GMC Sierra, so same year, the 84X, or maybe it was the 84 Denali. So he took his keyless fob, hit the lock and unlock button for like three seconds. It supposedly reset the system. We saw the side lights kind of light up. Mine did that, but the air didn't go away. It was still there. So maybe there's something else going on. But yeah, like I said, since we did have that, those two modules disconnected, I'm assuming some kind of fault code got thrown. And the only way I know of, of getting rid of those is to disconnect the battery. So. We're going to leave the battery disconnected the entire time while we change the oil, so 30 plus minutes. We'll see how long this takes, but yeah, so we need our Dexas oil. It's that uh, Zero W20, like we said. This, the system calls for eight quarts. I got two five-quart jugs, so we got ten quarts just in case we need a little extra. And the other thing is we're going to empty our catch can for the first time and uh, just see if there's anything in there over the last... I don't know, 500 to 1,000 miles since we've put that on, so. All right, guys, so the drain plug is a 15 millimeter bolt, and I do not have the car on jack stand, so I think we should be able to service this just on the ground, and uh, and you guys can actually see the back of the big brake kit, and uh, boy, those look good. <laughs> anyway, back to the topic at hand. Yeah, so this is the very bottom of the oil pan, and this should come right out. I thought we were going to have to take this front skid plate off, but... Honestly, they put everything back behind between the sway bar and this cross member. I think this should just drain right down. So let's go ahead and uh, get this loosened up and get the oil drained out. Then we'll figure out how to get the filter off. All right, so I've got the plug loose. Um, I'm almost positive I'm going to get covered in oil here. But, uh... oh yeah, that's nice and hot. Ow. <laughs> but uh, there you go. Just break that off with a 15 millimeter bolt and uh, let the oil drain out and we should be good. And then, like I said, we gotta figure out the filter. So let's uh, let this drain and we'll pick this up when we're ready for the filter change. All right, guys, we've shown this oil filter removal tool. I actually have a link to that video up above, but there is enough room between the 
L87 oil pan and the oil filter to use this tool to pull it off. So I'm going to back it off a little bit and you guys can see that this will turn. It just is taking some effort because I think whoever put this filter on at the dealership uh, decided to go all, all Hulk on it and it's super tight. So let's get this filter off and we will drain this oil. All right, guys, we got the new PF63 filter on there. We also got the drain plug. Tighten back down. We've drained all the oil. I did let it drain for over 30 minutes. I actually went and took a lunch. And uh, yeah, we should be done with everything down here. We just got to refill the oil. All right, guys. I did want to show you one difference between the new PF63 and the old PF63. The part numbers are actually a little bit different. So this is one I picked up locally. Part number ends in 5811. If you guys look at the filter that came from the dealership, that ends in 1742. So there's a difference. So it's 127, 317, 42. And this one is 127, 35, 8, 11. There actually is a bit of a difference on the very top of the filter. The one that I picked up locally has a bit of a sunken down, um, you know, very, you know, see, you guys can see that V. You know, it goes down and then it goes toward the center. Well, if you look at the old oil filter, it was perfectly flat. So uh, I did see another guy that owns a truck. I think it's uh, I think it's Lone Star Hawaiian. I think he's got like a 2019 Silverado as well. And uh, he kind of pointed this out and he freaked out about it. But honestly, guys, if you take the flange off, so the, the rubber seal, both of these tightening surfaces tighten at the same level. So it's perfectly flat level with the top of the filter. Same thing, this one, this one if you take that rubber seal off, it's perfectly flat with top of the filter. The only thing that is different is this top like flange surrounding it. So this one's a little bit more sunk down. This one's flat. Now I don't see that being a major performance issue or anything. I just want you guys to be aware that if you take your old filter off and you take your new filter and they look different, that is why. It's just that this little uh, flange with the circles in it, it's just designed differently. So I uh, just want you to be aware that there is a difference between the older 63 filters and the newer one. So the next part of this maintenance is gonna be taking off the catch can, checking what's in it. So uh, I'm actually gonna need two hands. So let me loosen that and uh, we'll take a look at it. All right, it is unscrewing. I was actually kind of concerned when we mounted this. I'm gonna have issue getting this off, but now it came off. And, oh, that's not much at all. There, you know, for this having 500 to 1,000 miles on it, you know, there's some fluid in it, but it's not that bad. The other thing we want to do is make sure you wipe the bottom of the surface on here because you don't want this dripping all over your engine bay. All right. Let's go uh, dump this into our oil bucket. So yeah, a little bit of oil on there. Let me clean this out, then we'll reinstall it. All right, so we got that dumped out and cleaned out. Nothing too crazy like we said. We just want to retighten this and we should be good to go on this oil change all right so we got our funnel on here and we're just gonna be pouring in this 0w20 now the specs call for eight quarts we're just gonna go ahead pour in all five quarts of this jug and guys lesson learned there is no mobile one 0w20 the AFE, the Advanced Fuel Economy, is kind of like the basic version, if that makes sense. They don't make just a Zero W20 with none of the additives or added functionality or whatever. You know what I mean? Like extra additives. This is the base Zero W20. They don't make anything else different. There is like no regular version anymore. The Advanced Fuel Economy is the regular version. All right, guys, to keep this as dumb proof as you can, I just went in and marked the other three quarts. So this top is going to be, you know, one quart, so that's six, seven, and eight. When we get to here, that'll be your last two quarts, nine, ten. We don't want to go over eight with the L87 V8. All right, guys, we just finished the oil change. We ended up putting eight quarts of oil, like we said, put the cap back on, and we made sure the Catch can was tight as well. We drained that. Like I said, there's a little bit of fluid in it, but nothing too crazy. And uh, yeah, so that is it for the oil change, kind of like we were saying. So, so now we're gonna go ahead and hook the battery back up. Hopefully that resets the key fob issue that we're having. And we also need to figure out how to reset the oil 
monitor and gauge and you know make sure that that is reset as well all right first test will be if the chrome button works oh hey that does work i think we have resolved the key five issue like i said these trucks are stupid finicky when it comes to electronics so disconnecting the battery seems to reset a lot of things all right so we're in we've got the zr2 badge you know we updated that a while ago Let's put the truck in accessory mode. All right, we've got no uh, error message about the key fob. So uh, start vehicle to view application. Okay, I guess we do have to start it. That's fine. All right, so we're gonna have an error message about the hood. It's fine. Open then close the driver's window. Oh, it's because we reset it. So this is kind of the menu you get to see. Whoops. Well, that's interesting. The service keyless start. Tire pressure. Yeah, that'll reset after a while. But anyway, to reset the oil menu, we're gonna go to information. We get to information. We're gonna click the center button here. Or you wanna reset, click that, yes. All right, it's been reset to 100%. So I think we're good to go on the oil change. Still trying to figure out this service key fob thing, but yeah, so I'm just show you, the truck is locked. I'm just trying to show you what the other guy did. He hit the lock and unlock button for like three seconds. So you just saw the front of the truck flash yeah, it's still not working. I bet if we start it, it'll still say, you know, service key fob. Yep. S service key, let's start. So, yeah, I don't know if that's something with the wireless charging pad install or something else is going on. I need to do a little bit more research. All right, guys, this might be kind of drastic, but I have taken the center console apart and I have unplugged the cell phone charger that we added in the last video. Um, I just saw a thread where a guy had added a charger to his truck and he was getting the same issue. So I don't know if there's some kind of constant draw or extra, you know, power usage from this, that little module. I don't know. It shouldn't be because, I mean, it's just a cell phone charger. It shouldn't be using that much energy. But So another reason we have taken this apart is because I have a feeling I might have left something unplugged. I was thinking about it last night, and I just discovered this. If you guys can see, see this plug right here? That goes somewhere. I don't know exactly. Oh, found it right here. So there's a third module down here. It actually looks like it's integrated into the center console part. And uh, there you go. Let me fasten it. Yeah, that may have been the problem. Let's go ahead, get out of the car, see if it works. And uh, hopefully that was it. I hate to say it, guys. You know, stupid stuff happens, and make sure you plug everything in. <laughs> All right, let's see if that little module, that one that almost looked like it blended in with the center console, let's see if that was it. Oh, God. Guys, that is so stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me. That's kind of usually how this works. So unlock it with my thumb truck unlocked so that's good let's go ahead and get in here and fire this thing up all right let's go yeah no pop-ups no no nothing so yeah be very thorough on your installs and um yeah we just had an issue by unplugging a module i thought i plugged everything back in but that little harness, like I said, was hidden at the very bottom of the center console. Couldn't see it. Now I can go ahead and put that back together. And we have resolved our service key fob issue. All right, guys, that is going to be it for the oil change and the key fob repair video. And, uh, yeah, obviously stupid stuff happens. And uh, kind of thought it was an electronic problem. It ended up being an electronic problem. I just forgot to plug something in. So, uh, yeah, I can admit my mistakes when you do something stupid and... Uh, Honestly, the way, like, kind of like I said, that module was literally, it's like about that thick, blends in with the back of that panel on the center console, and, uh, yeah, so, 
But uh, yeah, so if you do install one of those cell phone chargers on your 22 plus Silverado, make sure you plug everything in. <laughs> so, but yeah. Uh, and also, I just really wanted to document the oil change because it's the first time I've done it on the newer trucks. You know, obviously I've done it plenty of times on the SS, the Corvette, and my old GMT 800. So pretty simple on that. The oil change filter wrench tool that we have that fit just fine. I will say this, this truck is a lot easier than it was to do on my Duramax because the Duramax, the way the frame sat and the way the oil filter was, it was at an angle and you couldn't really get a wrench around that filter because it was right next to the frame and if you wanted to fill the filter up like pre pre lube it uh yeah you'd spill half of it out because it's almost horizontal so yeah there's another issue with the uh duramaxes or at least the lly maybe they changed the design on that on that with the gmt 900 and the t1000 trucks but you know it is what it is so and so yeah that is going to be a wrap on today's video if you guys like this video hit that like button if you want to see more truck updates hit that subscribe button turn on your bell notifications if you guys want to help support the channel check out all the links down below i should have links to the oil filter because i did get some of those on amazon the oil you might just want to buy locally but i'll drop a link for that and uh yeah also make sure you check out our website bonecrusherss.com any support you guys can give there goes right back into the channel these projects the shop corvette and the truck and all that so that's be it thanks guys have a great one yeah.